Welcome to chapter 6 in the CPE 350 lecture notes. We're going to be covering convection and conduction. So our learning outcomes for this chapter are going to be to apply Newton's law of cooling to solve heat transfer problems involving convection. And we're also going to be explaining why there's a critical radius of insulation that you need to apply to something. Otherwise, you lose more heat than you insulate. And this is going to be covered in our introductory sections. Section 6.1 will use the BO number to evaluate heat transfer in a cooling fin. And in section 6.2, we'll solve a simplified set of transient problems using lumped analysis. So let's get into it. Newton's law of cooling describes heat transfer between a solid and fluid interface. Mechanistically, heat in the atoms of the solid um, is transferred directly to molecules in the liquid, and then the liquid advects away from the solid, it moves away from the solid, and so that process of jumping into the liquid and then flowing away is called convection. Um, Newton's law of cooling is defined as follows, where H is our film transfer coefficient, or you can call it the convection coefficient, um, and it's a little bit different from our thermal conductivity in that the units are watts per meter squared Kelvin. Um, area is the area of heat transfer as usual. And the temperatures that are relevant here are the solid surface temperature and the bulk fluid temperature. You can see from the way that Newton's law of cooling is defined, um, it's that positive heat is moving from the solid to the liquid or fluid. Um, but mostly the sign isn't going to matter so much in these problems. So there's a little bit of flexibility in how you define it. Um, in contrast to conduction, we had two solids or maybe just one solid. And so you had uh, heat transfer that was entirely in the solid phase. So whenever there's a fluid, think convection. In a slab geometry, um, for example, the one shown here, we have the xy plane is the one in contact with the fluid. And so if we use that area, delta x, delta y, in Newton's law of cooling, we can calculate the heat flow in the z direction. Um, and everything that's not part of the delta t term can be inverted to become our resistance in the slab geometry. Likewise, for convection, radial convection in a cylindrical geometry, we can use the surface area of the cylinder 2 pi RL and Newton's law of cooling to calculate our heat flow in the R direction. And everything that's not in the delta T term can be inverted to give us our heat transfer resistance to convection in the cylinder. And finally, for convection in a spherical geometry, we put that area into our expression and we can likewise calculate a resistance to heat transfer in a spherical geometry. So we can compare the thermal resistance for a slab, cylinder, and sphere uh, the same way we did compare the thermal conductivities. Important to know what geometry you're working in and whether it's conduction or convection. All right, let's solve a problem using this. We're looking at an aquarium that has double glazed walls. The water is isothermal at a known temperature and the ambient air outside the glass is isothermal at a known temperature. We're given a couple of um, heat coefficients and the thicknesses of each layer. So we're going to be using Fourier's law and Newton's law um, through our multi-layered slab um, via thermal resistances. So we have two solids. And we know that through those solids, we're going to have conductive resistances. Um, there are three liquid, three fluids, I should say. Um, but it's not the number of fluids that matters. It's the number of fluid solid interfaces that matter. And so we've actually got four fluid solid interfaces. And that means we're going to have four convective terms in our expression. So to write these thermal resistances out, we have starting from left to right, convection between the water and glass, then we have conduction through the glass. Next up, we have two convective terms because there's convection at both sides of the air-glass interfaces, and more conduction through the glass, and finally, 
conduction from the glass out into the ambient air. It's often a little difficult to understand why there's not a conduction term in the air. It doesn't really make sense to describe thermal conduction in a gas usually um, because the diffusivity of the gas is so high relative to everything around it that it's mixing pretty well even though it's trapped in between glass. So you can assume that the air is basically isothermal except for at those two glass interfaces. So we don't consider any heat transferring in the air. All right, we have our expression for the total thermal resistance. And now we write it out using the terms for um, convection in a slab and conduction in a slab. And if we insert the constants that we know, we're able to actually calculate a value for the area times the total thermal resistance. Um, because we don't know the area of the aquarium. So returning to our equation for heat flow, we can multiply both sides of this equation by one over A so that we get a term A times R total for which we know the value. And then that means we're actually calculating Q over A. Um, we put in our delta T values, we put in our known A R total, and we get the result of 5.2 watts per meter squared. Thank you for listening and I'll see you for the next section.